Thank you, Fitzpatrick. Come up and talk about his new five-year contract. Uh, say a few words, and we'll open it up for questions for him. So, Menko. Yeah. Uh, first, I just want to start by uh, obviously thanking the Rooney family, uh, Mr. Rooney, uh, my family, uh, Omar, uh, Kev, Coach T, uh, and then I, and then anybody that's like, I can sit here all day and thank thank people. Um, this this has not been an individual effort by any means. I've had people house me when I when I didn't have a home. I had people feed me when I didn't have food. I had people take me to, to practice to work when I didn't have a ride. So uh, you know, I just want to thank everybody that's done uh, anything for me. Uh, and like I said, I can sit here all day and and and, and list those those names and, and 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 be appreciative and thankful. Um, uh, and then, last but not least, you know, my man the face. So I gotta thank thank the man upstairs, cause honestly, uh, it's still surreal, and uh, none of this none of this makes sense for real. And I know without him, uh, I would not be where I am today. So uh, you know, I thank my Lord, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and uh, yeah, I'm good and open for questions. Questions? Like a congratulations first off. Uh, you've had a pretty big smile all the time you've been talking up there. How did, how did it feel to get this done? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a blessing, man. It's a, it's something that you you work for a long time. I remember when I was 15 and I was, you know, telling my father when we were working together, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be at, at this position that I am, you know, now today. So uh, being here is uh, it's surreal. It's, uh, it's it's awesome. Uh, I'm happy that we got it done in, in the timing that we got it done, and uh, you know I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate to uh, be able to <laughs> to be a Pittsburgh Steeler for the for the long run. How important was it to get it done before training camp? Uh, you know it was it was it was uh, it was important. Um, you know I, I wanted to be out there with my with my teammates, uh, practicing and, 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 and competing. And uh, you know, thankfully we got it done in the timing that we did. So, how were you able to get it done this soon? I mean, I know last year TJ's kind of went into camp in into September. I think. Uh, well, why were you and uh, your representatives and, and the Steelers able to get it done in this time and fashion? Um, that's just what Omar and Mr. Rooney wanted wanted to do. Uh, I guess they, you know they had reached out a few weeks ago and uh, you know said that they're ready to start the uh, negotiation process and. Uh, I don't remember if we sent an offer or they sent an offer first, but we went back and forth for a little while. And, um, you know, this, I guess this is when they uh, wanted to get it done. Is it important for you to be the highest paid safety in the league at this point? Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think I'm, I'm the best at, at what I do. So, uh, you know, obviously you, you would like to be paid, be paid in that way and represented in that way. Um, and, you know, it's, Obviously, somebody it could be in a week from now or, or a year from now. Somebody's obviously going to uh, pass it up, but uh, you know you always want to raise the bar for the guys behind you. You want to raise the bar for the for the people in in your own locker room. So I think um, you know Mr. Rooney and, and, and Omar they see the work that I put in, and and uh, obviously my play on the field uh, reflects that. So uh, you know they're willing to to make me that, and and uh, obviously I'm I'm appreciative. Since your trade here, what have you come to appreciate about the Steelers team and organization, and why? Why did you want to be here for the long term? Um, I think the thing that I appreciate most about this organization is, uh, I would say, is, is, is commitment to winning. I think everything that we do, uh, or even me uh, coming here, was a was a commitment to to winning. It could have been a season where. Uh, you know, they, they, we lost our, our starting quarterback, our legendary Hall of Fame quarterback. Could have been a season where, you know, we just, they just tanked and decided to call it quits. But they, they went out, acquired me, acquired a few other guys, and said, you know, we're going to do what we got to do to win games. Whether it's on, if we got to win on defense, we got to win on defense. And uh, it obviously wasn't a perfect season, but it was a, a season that was dedicated towards winning, even though. That wasn't the. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't prime circumstances for winning or prime conditions for winning. Uh, so you know, we went out there and and uh, and I feel like that kind of set the tone for these last few seasons. You know, it showed me that this this program is a winning program. They're gonna do whatever it takes to win, uh, and and they're gonna hold you to that standard on a day to day basis. And that's what Coach T and the coaching staff and. Uh, Mr. Rooney, do uh, if, if you're not moving and, and focused on winning and being your best and competing, 
then they're not going to want you here. And I think that's just a reflection off of also of just the background that I come from. So uh, it works hand in hand. And uh, yeah. Is there greater pressure now on you that since you are the highest paid safety in the league to, to perform at that high? Obviously, you've done it. But is there even a greater pressure now than to continue to perform at that high level? No, I think I think because I've done it, there's there's, there's no pressure for real. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the that's a standard that I hold myself to day in and day out. It's a standard that my teammates hold myself to day in and day out. Uh, but no, I don't think there's any any pressure. I mean, obviously I have, I have to hold myself to that standard, but um, you know it's just an opportunity to to, to prove uh, that I am what I say. You know. Uh, along those lines, a bit more big picture. Uh, you guys have the highest paid edge rusher now, and TJ, the highest paid safety. And I, I think you guys are the highest paid defense overall in the league. Um, but coming off last season, struggles in the playoff game and, and the run defense issues, does that motivate you guys more to uh, kind of get it fixed going forward? I don't. I don't think necessarily the money motivates us, but just but just how we conduct ourselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Obviously, last year was not to our standard at all, and I know myself. TJ, Cam, all of us were, were, were not happy or pleased at all with, with the way the season ended, uh, especially how, you know, in that playoff game. It uh, was an embarrassment, honestly. It uh, was, was um, not, not our typical selves, and um, that's, that's what motivates us. You know, obviously the money, the money is a blessing, and the money is, uh, uh, creates opportunity for everybody around us and, and our families. But... Uh, you know that when you say the money, it's, it's more about uh, what they're saying with the money. They're saying, "Hey, look, we trust you to be the best and prepare to be the best and compete against the best and play A plus plus on a consistent basis." So it's more uh, uh, so of that 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 I'm trying to hold myself to rather than just saying, "Oh, I got paid, so now I got to play well." It's you no; know, these guys trust me with this amount of money and this amount of responsibility. So now it's my duty to go out there and. And, and play at a high level and, and, and show them that I deserve this compensation. Do you like the pieces you've added on defense in the offseason? You've got important guys back in the secondary as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, obviously I'm excited about getting a, a Kello back. I'm excited about Levi. I'm excited about Miles. Uh, we drafted well as well in, in the front. Um, I think I think we have a experience. We have a young but experienced uh, uh, defense, and uh, we got older guys that are, are, are great mentors, uh, are, are great uh, at coaching and, and getting the new guys uh, ready to play because we're going to need some new guys, to, new faces to, to step up. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited about this upcoming season. You talked a little bit about kind of the timeline of how things came together. Did it surprise you that it all happened as quickly as it did? Um. I had I had no clue what to expect, um, but you know it happened when it happened, and uh, we we're very fortunate. You guys you also how surreal it is. Has it kind of sunk in for you while we were? Uh, I I don't think so. Not really. I haven't been like super emotional like like I thought I would. Uh, I haven't seen my family yet. They're down they're down in Florida. But then once I see my family and my mom gets to crying, then <laughs> then I might get a little emotional. You guys also added a new piece to your coaching staff and Coach Flores. Uh, what's it been like getting reacquainted with him? Um, has it been strange at all, given the way things ended in Miami, or how's that uh, been reconnecting with, with Brian? It's, it's been it's been good. Um, you know, Coach Flo, he's he's, he's a great coach. Uh, he's a smart guy. He's a guy that that lives to a, a high standard, and he, and he's uh, he's a piece that I think that we really needed. Uh, he's a real detail detail oriented guy, uh, detail oriented coach. And uh, he's not—he's not a guy that's gonna let things just uh, get brushed to the side. He's gonna address them. He's gonna be direct. Uh, he might not tell you uh, exactly how you want to hear it, but he's gonna tell you. You know what I'm saying? And I think uh, that's important to have in the, in the locker room uh, when you have you know guys that may have egos and whatnot. He's gonna—he's gonna—he's gonna get on you. So he's—he's uh, a, he's a great coach. I'm excited to have him. He's—he's he's focused and, and locked in on winning. And uh, if that's what, that's what his goal is, and I'm happy to have him here. Make it hard. Do you feel uh, you've evolved as a safety, you know, in an intangible sense and on the field since coming to this organization? Can, can you repeat that? My bad. So, how much overall do you feel you've um, evolved as a safety since coming to this organization? Um, I think I evolved a lot. Um, my first game, uh, in well, as a Steeler in San Francisco, was my first time really playing full time free safety. Um, my first two games in Miami, I was kind of moving around a little bit, and 
that was really the only time I played free safety before in the league. Uh, I played a few games, uh, like four games in college. Um, but I think from that time now, I've, I've learned the type of player that I, that I am. You know what I'm saying? I learned my strengths. I learned my weaknesses. I know what I need to work on. I know uh, what I'm good at. And I feel like just being able to form uh, my identity um, has really helped me uh, evolve into the player that I am today. And I'm still learning, still adapting, still growing, still trying to find new ways to, to get better and improve. Uh, but I think um, I'm, a, I'm a totally different player than I, than I was uh, a few years ago when I first got here. Does that help that you pretty much been tethered to that safety position that you haven't been bounced around that much in this defense? Uh, I think I think it definitely helped me um, to be able to form an identity because it is hard when you first get to a, a system and they ask you to move around. Um, but you know, uh, part of that uh, adapting is, is also learning other other positions, learning uh, because you know once you get locked in, now people know where you are, and uh, we've kind of seen that happen the last last year, year and a half. Um, people know where I'm at, and um, you know they either choose not to throw there or look the other way, and that could happen when you get locked into one spot. So, uh, we're, you know, we're learning and adapting to, to to learn different positions and move around the, uh, the, the the field. And now that I'm comfortable and I know uh, the type of player I am. Right Two more questions. There were a number of your teammates who were complimentary of you and uh, your leadership for OTAs and minicamp, being there, being hands-on, communicating despite not going through. You know, everything. Why was that important for you to be there and be so active with your guys? Uh, one, because it's hard for me just to be away from the game. Uh, you know, I, I love this game, and uh, it's a big part of who I am and my identity. Um, and then two, I wanted, I wanted to, because I could have been at home in Florida training with my family. You know what I'm saying? But I, I really wanted to come up here and show my teammates that I'm still focused on winning. I'm still focused on on us, you know what I'm saying? I'm still focused on our development and, uh, and being present. And, uh, you know, I'm a real hands-on guy and I like to I like to talk. Sometimes I talk too much, you know what I'm saying, on the field and people get mad at me. But, uh, you know, I think, I think, uh, I know I know what the standard is and I know how, how older guys like Cam and TJ and, and Coach T uh, hold it to. And I feel like I'm a leader in the secondary and I wanted to, I uh, start building that standard now. Even though I wasn't out there practicing, I could still watch, still coach, still still talk, uh, and break down film with guys. And uh, I just wanted to to let the guys know, like I said, that that is that this is important to me. Even though I was going through this contract situation, that the team is first to me. Any final one? All right. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Thank you.